Good morning. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and soon coming King. This is Reverend Keith Torber, the pastor of Daniel Missionary Baptist Church of Tuskegee, Alabama, here at 1201 Gautier Street. Today is March 28th, 2020, and we bless the Lord on you all's behalf. We pray that God will give you the grace to hear something that will transform and change your life today. We know in the midst of every storm that we're going through, even with the coronavirus, we will bless the Lord at all times. He is our hope. Jesus, our soon coming king, is our hope. He is the final authority in all that goes on in the life of a believer, in the life of the world. And we give him glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise today. And we just thank him. And we're just going to take the opportunity to pray before we get into the word. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We give you praise this morning because you're our God. You're our king. You're everything. And we bless your name, O oh God. You're the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the ancient of days, the all-sufficient one, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and the morning star. And we give you the fruit of our lips this morning, O oh God. Because you're God and all by yourself, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We take this opportunity as a church to confess and repent of our sins, O oh God. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness. Everything that's in our heart that's not of you, Lord God, be washed away by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. And destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost, O oh God. Create in us a new heart. Renew a right spirit in us, O oh God. And give us the mind of Christ that we can act like Christ, think like Christ, and be like Christ in the earth, Lord God. Catapult us into your will this morning, O oh God. That we would do what you have called and created us to do this day, Lord God. Regardless of what's going on in the world, Lord. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be in us and upon us, O oh God. That we can be a light in darkness, O oh God. That we can point people to Jesus regardless of coronavirus or whatever that's going on in the world, O oh God. We just give you glory. We give you honor and praise today, Lord God. We lift up this nation to you, O oh God. We lift up the entire world unto you, Lord. That's in chaos, Lord. But we thank you, Lord God, that this did not catch you by surprise, that you know all things, O oh God, and all things will work together for the good of those that Lord love you, O oh God, and they're called according to your purpose, Lord God. We just thank you for your church, the living God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're calling your bride back unto yourself, and we even stand and intercede on behalf of the church this morning, that your church will repent and return back unto Jesus, her first love, O oh God. That will be without spot or blemish, O oh God. Ready for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, O oh God. That we, Lord God, as the church all over the world, will stand when no one else will, O oh God. To declare your glory, to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, O oh God. And as the gospel is, Lord God, sold into people's hearts, O oh God. That they will receive Christ according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, O oh God. That they will confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, the Lord Jesus, they will be saved and believe that you rose Jesus from the dead to save them, O oh God. We declare it here on the earth, O oh God. Let it be done, Lord God, what's in heaven it is on earth, O oh God. We just thank you this morning. We magnify your name, O oh God. We thank you this morning because you're our God. You're our Jesus. You're our Holy Spirit, O oh God. And we honor you. We magnify your name. We stand upon your word, O oh God. You said well, two or three are gathered together in your name. That you are in the midst of us, O oh God. And we thank you for your healing, O oh God. That by Jesus' stripes, that every sickness, every disease, every sin, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, it was nailed to the cross. Even coronavirus was nailed to the cross, O oh God. We thank you for healing us, O oh God, by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of his testimony, Lord. We thank you, we magnify your name. And we ask you to give you right away to have your way. Let your word be preached with simplicity, with power and understanding. The Lord God, it will bring us into a, um, a relationship with you, a deeper relationship. We pray that you give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. And Lord God, that the gifts of the Spirit be in operation. And now through the Spirit of oh God and the fivefold ministry gifts will be in operation today. We thank you. We bless your name, oh God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, 
please turn with me, excuse me, please turn with me to Psalms 34. That's the 34th division of Psalms. We know this song was written by David when he was acting mad before Abinelech. And we know that Abinelech was after uh, King David. Well, he was not after King David, but David knew that he was being hunted. So he acted like he was crazy. And Abinelech drove him and his men away. That's Psalms 34. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. That's verses 1 through 8. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It may be reading a little different from what you have. But we thank God for the revelation of his word. Amen. The word of God reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Verse 2 says, My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Verse 7 says, the angel of the Lord encounters all around those that fear him and delivers them. Verse 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. The title of today's message is, we will bless God regardless of the storm. I will say that again. We will bless God regardless of the storm. We see in our text here that uh, we know that David is on the run from Saul. Um, he has a band of men with him. Uh, we know that God appointed Saul to be king of Israel. And then David is his captain and Saul became jealous of David because, bottom line, the favor of God was upon David. And Saul was disobedient unto God. So God removed his spirit from Saul. And an evil spirit came to torment Saul. He became jealous of David. Everything that he did, the people were, the people were praising David more than they praised Saul. And it made Saul very angry to the point that he wanted to kill David. So David was on the run when he wrote this Psalms. And as we said in the beginning, that uh, he pretended to be a madman in the midst of the storm that he was going in through. That Abimelech drove him away from him and he departed. In verse 1 it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. We know that David was a worshiper of God. He loved God with every breath that he had in him. David had his faults. But God still considered David a man after his own heart. And that should be comfort for us. We all are at something. We all have done something against God. Before we got saved, we all did. And we may be still doing something now. But the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9 that if we confess and repent of our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness. He counted David as his son. He loved David. God loved David with all his heart. He said that, that David had a heart out of his own heart. So David blessed the Lord at all times, regardless of what he was going through, regardless of running from his enemy that was trying to kill him. The Bible said that David blessed the Lord at all times. And he said his praise shall continuously be in his mouth. And we should do the same today. Regardless of what storm that we're going through, regardless if it's coronavirus, regardless of our finance, our health, regardless if people are acting crazy on your job, in your family, wherever you may be, it seems like the walls are closing in and then you're pushing back and you don't have anywhere to go to, begin to bless God with everything that's in you, with every breath that you have, 
to let God know come hell or high water that you're going to still bless him. You're not going to curse him. You're going to bless him with everything that's in your mouth. With every breath that you have in you, you're going to bless God. Amen. Regardless of your seeing your prayers answered, we still have to bless God. Especially we as children of the king. So we can't be like everyone else when the, everything crumbles down. We can't be afraid. We cannot, we cannot be in fear. We have to have faith that our God is going to deliver us whatever we're going through. Amen? Amen. It says, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. See, people are watching you during the storms that you're going through. Even through this coronavirus, he's watching us. People are watching us. If we name the name of Christ and we believe that Jesus Christ is our king and we have faith that he is deliver us, we should continue to move forth and do what he has called us to do. We cannot be moved off of the path that God has given us. We have to stay on the straight and narrow path of God. We cannot let things like the coronavirus or uh, unemployment, or whatever you're going through, sickness or disease, we cannot allow it to us to move off the path that God has us on. Amen. See, that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants to act in fear. He wants us to go out and act in fear, and then when people around us see that we're Christians and we're responding in fear, how are we expect them to respond? We have to respond in faith. We have to respond when God tells us to do something. He wants us to go do it. God doesn't want us to go hoard everything out in the world out of fear. He wants us to believe that he is our provider. Amen. If he tells you to go do it, then you go do it. If not, we need to keep our eyes, stay focused on him. That's what we're talking about Psalms 34. We're looking at verse 3 now. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So that seems crazy. How can I exalt the name of God when this coronavirus is spread all around the world? And I'm not magnifying coronavirus, but I'm just saying that Jesus is still our hope. We can still bless and magnify his name in the midst of everything that we're going through. Verse 4 said, David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. See, regardless of what we're going through, we can always seek God. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all of the things will be added unto you. So when things come upon us, when the, uh, the temptations and the trials of life and diseases and cancers and all the amount of things come upon us, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. So when we go into prayer with God, just like David did, God can give you strategic plans on what to do. Amen. Look at David with Psalm, he wrote Psalms 34. He knew that he was about to be destroyed by Abimelech. But he had the wisdom to act like a madman. When he started acting like a madman, a bit of didn't want to have anything to do with it. Foaming out the mouth, acting crazy. But God delivered David and his men out of the hands of a The Bible says, a bit he drove them away and he departed. God will give you wisdom inside of your storms how to act, what to do. It may seem crazy, but if God tells you to do it, you better do it. Amen. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now, I'm not saying that we as Christians don't ever get afraid, but we do get afraid. But when we do get afraid, we have to go to our Father and not resp respond in fear, but we have to respond in faith. If God told you he's going to deliver you, he's going to deliver you. So do not be afraid. Reports are coming in all over the place from the media, social media, but our report should come from God as children of God so we can continue to be a light 
in the midst of everything that's going on. Money can't buy your way out of this virus that's going on. Your prestige cannot buy you out of this virus. No platform that you can stand on can protect you. But only by the blood of Jesus and the word of his testimony can we be delivered. The Bible said that Jesus nailed sin to the cross. And I believe with all my heart that even this coronavirus was nailed to the cross. This did not catch God by surprise. And neither should it catch us by surprise. God told us that we were going to have trials and tribulations. But we should continue to name the name of Christ. We should continue to preach the gospel with boldness. We should continue to be a witness to people on our jobs, in school, in the marketplace. Jobs are shutting down all over the world. More people at home now. There's so many people out in the grocery stores. That is the time that we need to stand and share Jesus. Yeah. We don't have to beat nobody on the head with a Bible. Mm -hmm. We can just tell them good morning. Yeah. Jesus loves you. Yeah. Let your life, the way you live, be a testimony for the goodness of Jesus. Now, I'm not telling people to be foolish. We as Christians, we have to follow laws. We need to do what we can to protect ourselves and our loved ones. So we always talk before, wash your hands. Don't be afraid. Don't act foolish. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I don't have to wash my hands. I don't have to do what everybody else do. That's foolishness. Yeah. Continue to do what you're supposed to do. Continue to protect your body. Protect your family. Do what they say do. But when God stands up and tells you what to do, you be obedient unto him. Wise as a serpent. Amen. Amen. Wise as a serpent. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Verse 5 says, they looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. When we look upon and gaze the majesty of our God, a God that we cannot even see, but when we go into prayer, we're into fasting and worshiping God, we can experience him. See, in the days of old, the priests and the prophets had to go before God on your behalf, but we don't have to do that anymore. We have access to our Father at all times through his Holy Spirit. And he is radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. When you cry out to God, not out of fear, but out of faith in his word, he will hear you, and he will deliver you. The Bible says that the weapon formed against you shall not prosper. It didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed, but it said it would not prosper against you. Yeah. I don't care what kind of report you have. Thank God for doctors and scientists and people that are practicing medicine. He created them. He gave them the ability to do these things. But God has supernatural power to deliver you and heal your body, heal your mind, heal your soul. He can do it. We just have to believe it. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him. God is calling his people back unto himself. He's always been doing it. But it's, it's taking something like this terrorist attacks and coronavirus to bring people back unto God and to cry out unto him and to repent as a whole, as a nation, as a world to repent of our sin, to repent, return our backs on God, return back unto Jesus, our first love, and to receive his forgiveness, and to receive his cleansing, that he can put us back into right relationship with himself, that we can go forth as men and women of God to complete the first works that he has called us to do. Amen. Verse 7 says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. And here the word fear is not talking about being afraid of God. God is not some judge that's hanging around with a, a, a gallery waiting to bash you over your head. Fear means reverently respect God. Reverence him. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Reverencing God. Knowing that he is God. That he is king. That he holds the world in the span of his hand. 
We ought to give him reverence and honor and awe of him because he is God. And that's what fear means. And it says, and he will deliver us. It says, the angel of the Lord encounters around all those who fear him and delivers them. God has the power to deliver us. Just like the three Hebrew boys over in, in uh, Daniel chapter 3. When they refused to bow down to the uh, idols that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. And they were about to be thrown in a fiery furnace. And the king gave them one more chance to bow down to his golden image. But they refused. And matter of fact, they told him, say, King, we're not going to do this. Our God has the power to deliver us from you. But even if he don't, we know he has the power to do it. And so we're not going to bow down to you. King Nebuchadnezzar got mad. He told his guard to turn that furnace up seven times hotter than it really was, than it already was. And the ones that pitched uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into that furnace, they were burned up. The Bible said they were cast into the midst of that fiery furnace. The door shut. And then King Nebuchadnezzar came around and looked. He said, Woo! Then we put three men bound in their clothes into this furnace. But I see four men. And the fourth one is like the son of God. God will bring your enemy to their knees and they will recognize that God is Lord in your life. The Bible said when they came out of that fiery furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke. Their clothes would not even burn. Only a God can do that. And they had their trust and reliance on him. And we have to have the same trust and reliance on God as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. As David did. David, even though he was running from Saul, God still loved Saul and he refused to touch him. He didn't want to do any harm to Saul because he knew that God created him. He anointed him as king. That's reverently fearing God. Last verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Even Jesus Christ, when he came down to earth, God as a man in the flesh, he came down for one purpose, and that's to serve God with everything that was in him. He came down with one purpose, and that was to reverently fear God, to show us how to do it. He came down here with a purpose to teach the gospel, to preach the gospel, and to manifest the glory of God in this earth. He came down here with a purpose to die on a cross for all mankind. He came to pay a price for a ransom that we could not even pay. He carried the cross all the way up to Calvary. And when they hung him up on that cross, they put nails in each one of his hands and they stretched him wide and lifted him up. And they nailed him to that cross. It was not easy for Jesus. But he knew it was already prophesied what he was to do for all mankind. He could have came down off that cross and caused legions of angels to destroy his enemies. But he didn't do it because he knew that was not the will of his father. The will of his father was for him to be a, the final sacrificial lamb for all mankind. To shed his blood for all mankind. And when they pierced him in his side, blood and water ran out from his body. He gave up the ghost. He died on that Friday. They took him off that cross and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. It was borrowed because he was not going to stay there. He went down Friday. He was in there Saturday in the morning. He was in there Saturday night. But as the prophets of old prophesied, Early Sunday morning, Jesus rose up with all power in his hands to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy the works of coronavirus, to destroy cancer and sickness and disease and sin. He nailed it all to the cross for you and I. That was the will of the Father for Jesus. That was his purpose. We all have a purpose here. Anyone that names the name of Christ, God created us with a purpose. 
He told us to subdue the earth, take care of the earth, and multiply. That same call is on the, the life of the church today. We are to multiply and reproduce, not after our own kind, but after Jesus. Amen. He paid the price. When he was risen from the dead, he now sits at the right hand side of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Father, I know what they're going through. I went through it. Have mercy on them. Oh, He's our Savior. Jesus. He's oh, our Savior. Jesus. If you do not know Jesus, Jesus. as your Savior, let today be the first day of the rest of your life. If you listen to this by Facebook, YouTube, however this message come across to you, you can receive Christ right where you are. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess and repent, if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can't pay for it. It was already paid for by the blood of Jesus. It's free for the taking. Regardless of what you've done in your life, God can forgive you. But only through his son, Jesus. The Bible says there's only one way to the Father, and that's through his son, Jesus. Let today be the first day of the rest of your life. Jesus died that you may live and live life abundantly. All you have to do is to ask him to come into your heart. Make him king, Lord, over your life. And believe that he died for you and God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. His life was worth it. It was well worth it. It was worth it for you. It was worth it for me. It was worth it for everybody on this earth. Everybody may not receive him. But if you hear the word of God today, do not harden your heart. Believe in him. Receive his word. Receive salvation today. It's just that important. He went to an eternal place in heaven to prepare a home for you. A place of eternity outside of this body. So when you leave this body, the body goes back to the dust. But your eternal soul and spirit is going to have to go somewhere. And it's going to only go to the Father through his son Jesus. A lot of people say, well, God is a loving God. He would never send me to hell. No, he's not going to send you to hell. People will send their own selves there but not receiving his son. Amen. Receive eternal life today through his son, Jesus. Amen.